Hi, <clears throat> Bo, and greetings from where am I now? Oh, I'm in Salt Lake City, <laughs> Utah, USA. And it's five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> So we can start. Hmm. Oma Jnana Dimirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Ilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svayam rupa kadamahyam dadati svapadantikam Vandeham shi guru shi yutta paratamalam shi gurun vaishnavamscha shi rupam sagrajatam Sahagana ragunatang vitang tam sadvivam sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishadam Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi, Paschatya Deshadarine, Vanchakalpatar Uvyascha, Kripas Induvya Evacha, Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namo. He Krishna Karuna Sindhu, Dinabando Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute, Tapta Kanchana Gorangi, Radhe Vrindavaneshwari, Rishabhanu Sute Devi, Pranamami Hari Priya. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gora Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare Um, if you see me uh, yawning at some point, <laughs> it's because uh, I arrived where I am now a little late. Not terrible, not, not so late. We got here, uh, I guess we got here before 10 p.m. Um, yeah. We drove from Logan, Utah, and we had just had a program in Logan at the home of Radhika Raman Prabhu. And then immediately jumped in the car with Rasa Vilas Prabhu and his good wife. Uh, and drove to Ras to their house. So that's where I am now. Uh, we drove through the snow. There's quite some snow. And we drove through the mountains. Uh, and it was very exciting. <laughs> Fortunately, 
Ras Vilas Prabhu is a good driver and he had a very has a very good car. So material conditions, uh, despite material conditions, we're here in in the land of the Mormons. <clears throat> Utah, the state of Utah, and especially Salt Lake City, is a place of the Mormons. This is where the Mormons migrated to um, in the 19th century, I guess, uh, having been persecuted in the eastern part of the U.S. And uh, one, one thing interesting I noticed because of the very strong Mormon presence, uh, unlike... I think anywhere else in the U.S., you see no advertisements on the highway for uh, for alcohol or cigarettes or any any or gambling. There, there's no uh, gambling is uh, forbidden. There are no gambling places in this state. Uh, so, yeah, in, in many ways, Mormons are, relatively speaking, quite pious. And uh, we met one, uh, one young Mormon. He was uh, our assistant, Radhi Garaman, and I were... Um, Re re recording uh, a conversations, you can say, lecture conversation uh, for the Oxford Center for Hindu Studies. We were able to use the facility of the video studio uh, at his university, very professional studio. And there were three cameras, three big, full size. And uh, the person operating them, a young man, a student was, uh, is a Mormon. And he was so nice. And he was so interested in what we were speaking about, uh, about the Srimad Bhagavatam. And he had many questions. And whatever we would say, he would say, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> that's really cool. <laughs> we would be speaking about Krishna. And, oh, that's really cool. He, he was very open-minded, I would say. Um, all right. Shall we look at our song for today? Why not? Uh, let me make this a little smaller. And let's go here. As usual, first we have the previous song, which was two weeks ago. Again, my apologies for not being, uh, not having a Saturday Sunday last Saturday. Where was I? I was in Seattle, Washington. <clears throat> yes, I'll tell something about that, but after this song. Uh, just very briefly, this previous song, Lalasa song number three from Narottam Das Thakur, uh, where he's expressing this anticipation of being a young gopi maidservant, that is a manjari, a navadasi, <laughs> a new, a new dasi. Hmm. 
and he's he's anticipating that Rupa Goswami, not Rupa Goswami, Rupa Manjari, who is Rupa Goswami in this world, will directly order him, will give him instructions. <clears throat> uh, and he's wondering, when will that auspicious time come? Shubha Kshana, Shubha Khan. Um, and he's anticipating what he will say, what Rupa Manjari will say. He will say, oh, maidservant, come here. Quickly arrange for my fancy garments and ornaments. <laughs> so that's nice. Mm. And then he will feel very uh, delighted by that. Anandita hoya. Yatara Agnya Mule. And then, then more specifics. When will I fill a jeweled tray with various paraphernalia for worship? When engaged in her service, will I fill a golden goblet with aromatic water? Goblet is is a a cup uh, or liquid. It's a a cup with a stem, so it has a little stand and a, a thin part on the bottom. That's a goblet. When will I be able to quickly approach the divine couple? Is his final word question? Donghar sumuke loya ibo. Shigragati. <clears throat> Quickly, Shigragati. Naratam das dasha kave hoibe e mati. And uh, we mentioned last time the word dasha with a long a at the end means condition or uh, or sort of position or platform level of, of consciousness, perhaps. Okay, so that was last week, last time. And today we have Lalitha's song number four. And it's very similar and continuing, I would say, this anticipation. Shirupa paschate ami rohibo bhitahoya dunhe puna kohiben ama pane chaya. I timidly follow behind Shirupa Manjari. Paschate, I think, means uh, behind. When will she say to me, fetch some water for the divine couple? Um, so pane would be water, drinking water specifically. And donhe is the divine couple. Puna, I would think, means again, but I'm not sure. Kohiben. Um, when will they say, or when when will she, Rupa Goswami, say? <clears throat> um, oh, and I timidly follow behind. So timidly here is a, a, the translation of bhita, bhita hoya. Rahibo bhita. Bhita would generally mean fearful. But we can say, of course, he wouldn't be fearful as as we usually think of fear. So to be timid, I think, is a nice, nice way to say it. And Rahibo is future tense. When will I remain? 
Shri Rupa Haschate Amirahi. Yibo vipta hoya. So being hoya, timid, being remain, I will remain timid. Okay, then second verse, shodai, shodoya, with doya, with mercy. Hridoye donhe. Kohiben hasi. <laughs> Kotai paile rupa e navadasi. When will the divine couple, compassionately smiling, say, quote, Where has Rupa Manjari gotten this young maid servant? <laughs> That's interesting. <clears throat> so, sa sadoya is translated here as compassionately and hasi uh, as smiling. Uh, so, Fredoye in the heart, uh, whose heart? Uh, well, in the heart of the divine couple, perhaps. Dohe um, <clears throat> or heart with with heart with a, I I would say with compassion in the heart. So uh, the divine couple in their genuine feeling of compassion. Kahiben, when will they uh, do? No, when will they say kahi, kahi ben? When will they say hasi, smiling? <laughs> Kotai paile rupa e navadashi. <laughs> so kotai is the question where? In modern Bengali, it's also. Uh, paile, have, have gained. Uh, Rupa, O oh, Rupa, E Nava Dasi, this new servant, this new servant girl. <laughs> where, where does she come from? <laughs> That's interesting. It's like they're expressing a kind of surprise. Um, Okay, number four. Ati namro chitta ami. No, not number four. Number three. Shri <laughs> rupa manjari tove donha bakka shuni manjulali dilo more e dashi ani. Hearing these words, Shri rupa manjari will say, Manjun, I think that should be Lali. Manju Lali gave this maidservant to me. Tabe. So, uh, Shri Rupa Manjari Tabe. Then, <clears throat> Don Habakya Shuni uh, is probably Shuniya. Uh, the two, the divine couple, um, having heard this speech, shuni, shuniya, this speech, vakya, of the divine couple. In other words, having heard their question, uh, Shri Rupa Manjari says, what does he say? Manjulali dilomore e dashiani. <laughs> Manjulali is uh, another Saki or man, Manjari, I'm not sure. Dilo is the past tense, gave more to me e dasi. Ani. Ani is, uh, is brought, uh, is, let's see, is came, came or coming or bringing? Coming, I think, yes. 
uh, ringing would be lai, lai, lani, lai. Then, fourth verse, ati namra chitta ami ihar janilo sheva karjo diya tobe hatai rakilo. At that time, Narottam says, at that time, I will feel very humble at heart. Namra chitta. <clears throat> Ati namra chitta. Uh, ihar, at that time. Um, mm, Jani lo. Uh, Jani lo, I think, could mean uh, was born. Will will have been born. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> so this feeling of humility will arise. Seva karja dia, and I will diligently engage in the service of the divine couple. <clears throat> diligently, I'm guessing here, maybe a translation of the word hetai. Uh, hetai, rakilo, uh, I will keep, <clears throat> I will have kept. <laughs> it, it's strange uh, I, to me. It seems like this is past tense, but it, we think it should be future tense, some sort of past future, future past, I don't know. Seva karja, karja, can mean duty, um, seva can mean service, attentive service. So that could be a kind of uh, dual service, service duty, uh, dia giving, tabe at that time, then at that time. And finally, hano tatva dongha kar. Sakshate kohiya narutame shevai dibe ni jukto koriya. When will the divine couple directly speak in this way to Narutam Das engaging him in their service? Hmm. So sakshate, of course, sakshat means direct. Kahiya, having, having spoken, uh, hano tattva, such, such a tattva, such a reality, you could say, such a, mm, such a thatness, <laughs> donha akar, uh, of the two, of the divine couple. Narutame Sevai Dibe. He will engage in Seva, Nijukta Koriya, being uh, connected. Nijukta <clears throat> Koriya, having become connected to that. Okay, so yeah, it's anticipating more sweetness. Um, now we change to music sound on. Okay. And uh, let's Uh, let's see if we can, let's see how this harmonium works. <clears throat> And 
this smaller than this over here. Okay, something like that. Okay. good harmony. Shakshate kohiya Narotame Shevai di be Nijukta koriya Heno tatva Donha kara Shakshate kohiya Narotame Shevai di be Nijukta koriya Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Rama Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 
Hare Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama. Srila Naratam Das Thakur Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <clears throat> so again, welcome everyone from Salt Lake City in Utah. Uh, Guru Maharaj, can you switch off the sound for musicians? Yes, thank you for reminding. And... Let's see, I just saw, yes, particular welcome to Anisha, <laughs> who is vi visiting for the first time. Hare Krishna, Anisha. Uh, you're in, are you in London? Yes, I'm in London. Uh -huh. It's a pleasure okay. to be here. Thank you so much for your association. Thank you for joining us. Anisha um, wrote to me a few days ago. Uh, she's especially interested in the subject of cow protection, animal protection, and she wants to pursue um, studies, university uh, research in relation to this subject. Do you want to say a couple of words about this, Anisha? Oh, uh, sure. Um, I'm just a bit in awe because of the, the bhajan you just sung. So thank you for that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm particularly interested in in how cow care can be more involved in, in the movement of veganism. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, I'm just researching a little bit um want to base my dissertation on that mm -hmm. um, yeah i i'm i'm really passionate about about animal ethics i hope i can learn more about it your book is is very much helping me so much oh good um, yeah i hope i can i hope i can learn i'm really happy to be here with, with all of you 
Well, uh, thank you and wel welcome to the Saturday Sangha. <laughs> we do this um, more or less every Saturday, depending on circumstances that I'm in. So uh, whenever we have, of course, you can join us. And uh, yeah. Oh, uh, before I forget, I want to ask is, um, <clears throat> is Mani Banda with us? Mani Banda, are you here? Seems not. Okay, we have to see about that. Mani Banda, uh, yeah. We were hoping he would be here to relieve Daityesha of translation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's, he's a very good translator. Uh, Daityesha is also very good. Um, um, but we thought we would... Anyway, he's not here. So Daityesha, I guess you're translating. And uh, a moment ago, I saw... Valeria from Cordoba. So welcome to Valeria. Oh, there she is. Yes. <laughs> uh, so I don't know if she's getting... Yeah, Daitesh is there. I hope translation is going on. It's going on, he says. <laughs> Good. Okay. Right. So, what are our subjects for today? Um, today is Disappearance Day, Observance Day of Srila Jiva Goswami and of Srila Jagadish uh, Pandit. So, I had to do a bit of <laughs> I don't want to call it research, but I had to look uh, who is Jagadish Pandit. And uh, I thought we could look briefly. Where is that? I have it here somewhere. Is it here? No, it's not there. Um, it's uh, maybe here. Or maybe here. Yes, here it is. Okay. So, would you like to hear about Jagadish Pandit, an associate of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Say, yes. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, Jagadish Pandit, Sri Jagadish Pandit. I'll just summarize some things what are written here. Um, okay, his father was Sri Kamalaksha Bhatta, uh, who was the son of Bhatta Narayana. Okay, and they came from an area called Goigar Banyagata. All right. Uh, it doesn't mention the name of his mother. His wife's name, let's see. Yeah, his wife's name was Dukini Devi. Dukini Devi. Okay. And he had a younger brother who was Mahesha. And uh, they left from wherever they were. Uh, to come to the banks of the Ganga. So they came to, um, yeah, to the Navad Navadvip area after the parents died. <clears throat> and they lived near to Jagannath Mishra. So this is uh, how it happens that there's some exchanges with Mahaprabhu. Uh, it's said that, of course, later 
um, Gorasundar, Lord Chaitanya, instructed Jagadish to preach Harinam at Nila Chal. Nila Chal is, of course, Jagannath Puri. Uh, Nila, Nila Chal refers to the temple specifically. Chala is a, a hill. Um, when you're in Puri, you may sort of wonder, so where is this hill? Uh, it seems that the temple itself is on a small, is on a kind of raised area. And I guess that's Nila Chala. Nila means blue, the blue hill. <clears throat> okay. Um, so apparently at some time he went to uh, Puri, Jagadish, and there he prayed to Lord Jagannath. And what was he had a specific request? Um, but it doesn't say what the request was. It says that he was rewarded by uh, receiving a deity of the Lord. And this deity he brought to Jeshur on the banks of the Ganga near Chakdaha. Okay. Um, it says Yeshur, Jeshur. I'm not sure. This must, I don't, I don't know if it's different from the Jeshur of Bangladesh. That's not on the Ganga. You see, the problem is I don't know the geography. <laughs> In any case, it says this deity was brought suspended from a staff, suspended from a stick, which is still being worshipped in the temple of Lord Jagannath at Jeshur. Did we go to this place on our, on our um, yatra from Puri to Mayapur? Perhaps we did, and I don't remember. This temple is presently under the charge of Sri Gaudiya Mutt. Oh, it says it's um, Chaktaha Railway Station on the Shelda Krishnanagar line, which means it's north of Kolkata. No, I don't think we went there. Okay, um, so here's the perhaps more better known pastime mm. involving uh, Gora Hari, Lord Chaitanya, as a child. So as a child, uh, uh, little Nimai or Gora Hari was crying a lot. And his parents would say to him, tell us, <laughs> what's the problem? What is it you want? Whatever it is you want, we'll bring it. Just stop crying. <clears throat> and then uh, Gorahari would say, on this Ekadashi day in Jagadish and Hiranya's house are many preparations of Vishnu Prasad. If I can eat that, then I will be all right. <laughs> so Sachimata was uh, quite astonished by this. It says she was lamenting. Um, I guess I don't understand why. Upon hearing the words of the child, the neighbors laughed in amazement. How is it that such a young child as this is aware that today is a Kadashi? So apparently, Gora Hari was very young at that time um, because uh, one wouldn't have to be too much too old to understand Karashi, I, I would think. Maybe by age three, 
I don't know, you would have experience with children, you will know. <clears throat> well, now I'm curious. Who can tell me? Uh, maybe Mangala Chandrika, can you tell us how old were your children when they understood, oh, today is a Kadashi, therefore we don't take grains? Hi, Krishna Kramaraj. Oh, um, I think it's a while. So three might be early. I think at that time uh -huh. I have to, you have to still be on their, you know, behind their feet all the time uh -huh. because they uh -huh. might go to a neighbor <laughs> and get some cookies there. Oh, but <laughs> that's what was happening or to the baker in Radadish. <laughs> and he <would, laughs> give them cookies always available. But um, I remember asking you about this once when the children should really start following actively. And you told me that Prabhupada said that age seven would be a good time to sort of encourage children to start following, that they can follow at that time already, like uh, okay. consciously. Uh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a challenge. <laughs> it's a yeah. challenge, children. So... Your kids, did they start following at age seven? Uh, Nimai was really good in following for two years. <laughs> oh. And he remembered every time himself. And then, uh, yeah, now it's it was a difficult age at 10. <laughs> oh. It was a very difficult age. So it's kind of the uh, way, how do you call it? <laughs> he's, he's not so insistent anymore, unfortunately. Oh. Oh, he's he's a little rebellious in this regard. Uh, he he had a period. Now he's actually all quite good, and sometimes he forgets, and then he says, "Oh no, again, I forgot." <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Well, that's a good sign. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. So back to Jagadish, and so so Gorahari says. It's a kadashi, and I happen to know that <laughs> they have prepared so many things for Vishnu, uh, and that's what I want. Then it says, then the ladies told him, Bap Nimai, don't cry anymore. We'll bring what you have requested. So then they go to <clears throat> Jagadish and Hiran. Iranya's house and they hear this request and they're very pleased. It says they were very close friends of Jagannath Mishra <clears throat> and they were very much aware of who Gorahari was, that he is indeed the supreme Hari. <clears throat> And so, with that understanding, they were very happy to bring uh, the uh, offerings to him as the Lord. And it says here, Bap, Vishvambar, we have brought everything which you requested. Now, please eat it in great happiness and don't cry anymore. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it sounds like Jagadish in this case is in a kind of vatsalya mood, vatsalya bhava. Then it says that Gaur Sundar, Gaurahari, along with his friends, then enjoyed that feast. And he showed his transcendental Bala Gopal form to Jagadish and Hir Hiranya. Um, his bodily luster appearing like a fresh rain cloud with a peacock feather adorning his head. The splendor of his beauty was reflected in the faces of the other boys in whose company he was enjoying this feast. So we can imagine this, these uh, boys all glowing and smiling and blissful as anything, having this feast of Jagadish. 
Seeing this scene, the two brahmanas loudly chanted, Hari, Hari. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and it says here, Jagadish Pandit probably came to Joshore after Mahaprabhu took sannyas. Hmm. And he would go every year to Puri. And he was also present at the Chiradai uh, Mahotsava at Panihati. So that's a little about Jagadish Pandit. Jagadish Pandit. He Jai. And it's also the Tiruvav Titi of Srila Jiva Goswami. And Jiva Goswami is, as we all know, one of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. And he was one of the younger of the Goswamis. Uh, the uh, nephew of Srila Sanatan Goswami and Srila Rupa Goswami. And it was Jiva Goswami who uh, compiled, who wrote, assembled, compiled uh, the Shat Sandarvas. Uh, Shat means six, and Sandarva means treatise, the six treatises on the Srimad Bhagavatam. Essentially, these six works uh, are um, very extensively, elaborately, and systematically uh, uh, systematically explicating the theology of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Um, just uh, three days ago, four days ago, uh, well, for two days, mm, we had the company in Logan with uh, Radhika Raman Prabhu, and also we had the visit uh, of uh, one devotee, Sundar Gopal Prabhu, who came all the way from Costa Rica, uh, just to examine some copies of manuscripts of these Sandarvas of Jiva Goswami, which are in the possession of Radhika Raman Prabhu. <laughs> and why he came to examine is because he's doing research for his uh, doctorate, um, he's uh, researching his doctorate at Oxford University. So he lives in Costa Rica and he goes to Oxford um, regularly where he is under the guidance of uh, Gopinath Acharya Prabhu, a devotee who is also a scholar and who is um, and a lecturer at Oxford University. So this devotee, Sundar Gopal, is doing research. Um, part, part of what he's doing uh, is related to, uh, the, uh, to Jiva Goswami's writings. Uh, but he is, as I understand, he's mainly focusing on Srila Bhaktivinod Thakur um, and his, his theology. So he's going into great depth uh, to examine, um, you could call it, uh, the history of ideas, how certain ideas of our theology develop over time. Um, well, that's all I'm going to say about that. But anyway, Jiva Goswami, whose uh, disappearance day is today, 
is especially remembered, I would say, for his uh, very um, elaborate uh, systematic theology of the Bhagavatam. But having said that, he's also known for his um, his narrative Leela work, the Gopal Champu. And the Gopal Champu is interesting. It's a Champu. What is a Champu? A Champu, <laughs> not shampoo, <laughs> but Champu, uh, is a particular genre of Sanskrit literature, which includes both poetry and prose. It's a kind of alternating poetry and prose back and forth. Uh, we have Jiva Goswami's Gopal Champu, which describes Krishna Leela uh, in Vrindavan. It, you could say it elaborates on what is described in the 10th canto of the Bhagavatam. Uh, a, a similar elaboration from Kavi Karnapura in his Ananda Vrindavan Champu. Uh, is also a wonderful work. Uh, they're full of full of sweetness. It seems like both of them, their purpose was to simply relish the sweetness of Krishna Lila and to share that with all of us. So, Jiva Goswami Ki Jai. Um, a bit of show and tell from myself I wanted to say of course uh, I've come now from Argentina to North America it was a bit of a long trip uh, from Buenos Aires to Seattle in the far northwest uh, of the U.S the continental U.S., as it's called, um, to visit my brother, who I haven't seen for a few years now, except on Zoom. And it was very nice to, as we say, catch up with him and his, his wife. And we saw also his, uh, his son and his son's family. So a bit of family gathering was there and but I wanted to mention uh, on the last day before I flew to here uh, to um, Salt Lake City on Sunday Sunday morning my brother and his wife Deborah Ray and Deborah to their church. Uh, they are both rather active uh, since so many years in their uh, church, which is, uh, it's called the Unitarian Universalist Church. It's, uh, it's very little known, I would say, uh, outside of America and it's known also in in the UK. Uh, it has a rather recent history. It goes back, um, I think we could say less than 200 years. I'd have to check the history. But um, my brother is a member of the choir <laughs> of this church. It's a very small church. Um, they have, I think, altogether, what did he say, 150 members uh, of, of whom in the service I went to, there were perhaps present that day, um, certainly not more than 25 or 30, maybe less. And... Uh, the minister of this church is a lady, and she was not physically present. She was in south of Oregon, so she 
uh, gave her sermon uh, online. And this is what I wanted to mention. I, I found it interesting. I found out later from Sundar Gopal, uh, who I met in Logan, an interesting connection between our Bhaktivinoda Thakur and one particular personality of the Unitarian uh, church tradition uh, of the uh, early 19th century. His name is Theodore Parker. So Theodore Parker was a uh, he was a Unitarian minister, and uh, he was mentioned by this uh, minister in her uh, sermon. She was giving a little history, uh, a brief history of Unitarian Universalism. One of the, why it's called Universalist Church is because uh, the theology of the Unitarian Universalists is that uh, potentially everyone can, um, we would say, become liberated and go back home, back to Godhead. They don't say like that. They have the Christian tradition of heaven. So they're saying everyone without... Um, uh, everyone inclusively potentially can go back to God. Um, and she mentioned that uh, this idea goes back to Oregon, Oregon of Alexandria. This goes all the way back to the second century of the common era. So I found that so interesting that she was saying the origins of the Unitarian Church go all the way back to the second century of the Common Era. Well, uh, somewhat um, with some pride, uh, she was saying that the Unitarians became uh, already with Oregon seen as heretical <laughs> to Orthodox Christians. Oregon is said to have um, accepted the idea of reincarnation. It's not 100% sure if you look on Wikipedia, you'll see they say, um, some say he, he accepted reincarnation, some say not. But in any case, that idea is there. And so the Unitarians um, seem to be sympathetic to that idea and open to the idea that everyone is potentially able to go back to Godhead to be liberated, unlike the Christian idea of, you know, eternal damnation for some souls. Uh, but, okay, I'm sort of scat giving a scattered presentation here, what I wanted to say is that this uh, particular minister of the early 19th century, Theodore Parker, was read, some of his writings were read by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. And um, what Sundar Gopal Prabhu was saying, because this is part of his research, is that uh, Bhaktivinoda Thakur shows the, um, that he was inspired by, and you can say influenced by, Theodore Parker. Theodore Parker was a Unitarian Universal. I don't. It, it wasn't called Universalist back then, but a Unitarian minister, and he, in his time, was considered quite radical to the Unitarians. <laughs> <laughs> so this um, I don't remember her name the lady minister who was preaching on this last Sunday was uh, speaking positively about Theodore Parker 
uh, with respect to uni un universalism. So I just thought that's interesting. Uh, there's this sort of connection between uh, this American, basically American um, church, which most Christians will say is not actually Christian. Why? Because, well, they're Unitarian. What does Unitarian mean? It means not Trinitarian. Uh, the, the Roman Catholic Church and uh, I think one can say all of the uh, Protestant denominations, the Anglicans, they're all Trinitarian. They say that uh, there is this kind of three-in-one notion of divinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Uh, the Unitarians said, well, no, not exactly. Uh, uh, <laughs> There's the Father, yes, and there is the Son, yes, but maybe he's not the only son. <laughs> there are so many sons, there are so many daughters. <laughs> and yes, he is uh, very uh, special uh, in his teaching. The emphasis in Unitarianism is on the teachings of Jesus, not on the idea that he was crucified and uh, and uh, reincarnated <laughs> and so on. Anyway, I just thought that's interesting. Was Theodore Parker a vegetarian? We would have to research. I, I do not know. Um, but I... Yeah, maybe someone could do some research on that. Uh, oh, now I'm seeing a message from Avaditta Rai. There was some argument that Jagannath should not have a flute because he is four-handed Narayana. Some historical account is there that a few days in a year, Pujaris did put a flute in Puri, all because of a Pujari who always saw him as Nanda Nandana Krishna, Jagannath Ashtaka's second two slokas also mentioned Jagannath having a flute. What are your thoughts and what did Srila Prabhupada say about worshipping Jagannath with or without a flute? Okay. <laughs> well... I can say that uh, some disciple of Srila Prabhupada, I don't know who it was, wrote to Srila Prabhupada a letter asking, could we offer Lord Jagannath a flute? And Srila Prabhupada replied in the negative. And his his negative reply was, I have to say, expressed with considerable anger. <laughs> um, Prabhupada was saying, you know, don't speculate, just, uh, just maybe someone can find that letter. It's a kind of famous one, but um, he was saying, J don't speculate. Apparently he was concerned that devotees would start making up their own style of worship. And he wanted to make sure that the worship would be standardized. And so um, in that particular circumstance in that particular context, he said, don't speculate, don't know, don't offer a flute to Lord Jagannath. Now, whether Srila Prabhupada, does that make it, you know, an eternal instruction for uh, forever with regard to uh, our worship of Jagannath? Personally, I don't see it that way. Some devotees may see it that way, and if they do, 
I would respect that, but I wouldn't um, appreciate if they insist that everyone see it that way. <laughs> um, why? Because indeed, in uh, the as you've pointed out in the Jagannath Ashtakam, he is mentioned, uh, described as having a flute. And um, he is described in Chaitanya Charitamrita as being seen by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as being Nanda Nandana Krishna. To which, of course, one could uh, reply, well, that's Lord Chaitanya, that's not us. Yes. Ah, Tia, you found the letter. Thank you. Shall we look at this? I suppose we could. Um, letter to Drubananda. Uh, why are you... Oh, yes. In, in very good, you found this. You're expert researcher. <laughs> um, in the, it's one, two, three, four, five, fifth paragraph. I guess I could uh, share this. Let's see. Here. Okay, here we are. Why are you pouring water over the head of Radha and Krishna deities? <clears throat> Big deities should not be bathed in this way using water or other things. Rather, they are bathed daily by mantra. Uh, do you not know these things? So uh, this would refer to marble Radha and Krishna deities. And the problem with bathing them every day is that marble is porous. And so in course of time, this would damage, damage them. Uh, says, under no circumstances shall we bathe the Jagannath deities with any anything water or liquid. They should be bathed with mantra also. <clears throat> so that's interesting. Of course, Jagannath is, uh, is wooden. So they're also not bathed. But in Puri, they're bathed once a year. Uh, Snanyatra. So whether Prabhupada would then say under no circumstances, including Snanyatra, is perhaps an interesting question. Okay, then he says, now you are asking if Lord Jagannath carries flute? Why this nonsense question? You are asking me so many concoctions and manufactured nonsense. Don't bother my head in this way anymore. <laughs> From now on, unless I order you do something, change, or in addition, go on with the usual standard way. You manufacture ideas and then I have to waste my time. I have given you everything already. There is no need for you to add anything or change anything. Why you are asking these things? Who has given you such freedom? Pujari should operate entirely under the supervision of temple president and GBC, not independently. The greatest danger to our movement will come when we manufacture and create our own process for worshiping the deities. So don't ask any more new questions. Whatever is going on, follow it just to the exact standard as I have given you, that's all. Ooh. So that, that's probably one of the heaviest letters Prabhupada ever wrote. 
And that was from 1973, beginning of 1973, to Dhruvananda. Interesting. Well, so what to make of that? <laughs> Uh, let's see. Okay, Yamuna is asking in regard or saying in regard to Christian concept of eternal condemnation, I'm just wondering about the concept of Nitya Badha souls eternally conditioned versus Nitya Siddha souls. Ah, yes, interesting. Um, <laughs> that's certainly a matter of uh, discussion. If we consider the Madhva Sampradaya, they would, they would say, yes, there are Nitya Madha. There are souls who are literally forever and ever bound uh, and uh, this however does in my understanding not apply to our Gaudiya tradition where the word nitya although it sounds like it means eternal is used in a somewhat metaphorical sense Nitya means a long time, a time which is so long that it seems to go beyond time. Uh, <laughs> and so there's hope for everyone. But it's true in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also seems to, uh, well, to, to condemn uh, some souls to something like eternal damnation when he says, I have it here. Mm. Tan aham dvishata kruran samsareshu naradaman kshipam yajasram ashuban asrishu Eva Yoni Shu. He says, these envious persons, these uh, Tan Kruran, these um, cruel and uh, envious persons, Sang Sareshu, in this, uh, or who are in, uh, in Samsara, they are Naradama, they're the lowest of humans. Kshipa, me, I throw them. Uh, ajasram Ashuban, these inauspicious persons, Asurishu, Yonishu, into the wombs of demons. <laughs> and then he says, Asurim, Yonim, Apanna, Mudha, Janmani, Janmani. Mam, Aprapya, I. Aprapya eva, aprapya eva, konteya tato yanti adamang gatim. Uh, this is chapter 16, Bhagavad Gita, verses 19 and 20. He says, um, uh, apana, being placed, Asurim uh, Yonim in the wombs of demons. <clears throat> uh, these mudhas, these fools, Janmani Janmani, birth after birth, Mam Aprapya, not attaining me. Uh, Tataha, then Yanti, they go. Where do they go? Adam and Gatim, they go to the destination uh, of um, Adama. The, the, they go no place. They go to nowhere. <laughs> they go to the nowhere place. <laughs> Something like that. 
So this could sound like Krishna saying they're forever condemned, birth after birth. Well, yes, it's, but birth after birth doesn't mean necessarily eternally. It just can, it can mean after any number of births, any number of, of tens of hundreds of thousands of millions of births, but it doesn't mean infinite births, I, I would say like that. Yeah. Okay, that's uh, a few things for me. Anyone else have some news you want to share? Any show and tell or show or tell? Any uh, Anything you've been reading that you would like to share? Actually, we could take a suggestion from any any of you of something from Srila Prabhupada's books to read that you have been reading, if you like. Uh, yes, Daityesha. Yeah, we're not hearing you because I think you're on the Spanish channel. <clears throat> no, we don't hear you. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I think he's saying that he didn't raise his hand. He was just uh, putting his hand oh. on the head. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, all right. Anyone else? Anything? Any? Uh, any? Any news? No news is also good news, as they say. Uh, let's see. Dietitian does want to ask a question. He says, "Is he going to?" Right, um, this question. Dietitian, you oh. have to go out from the channel. Go, go to the English channel. <laughs> I wrote him a message. And Shimad, oh, he's, he's writing it in Bhagavatam. Canto 8, Chapter 5. Okay, I guess we can go to 8, Chapter 5. Uh, Library Bhagavatam Canto Eight Chapter Five Yes That seems to be as far as his question got. Oh. <laughs> The demigods appeal to the Lord for protection. Uh, I think this is leading up to uh, the past, yeah, the pastime of the churning of the ocean. While he's preparing his question, if he's writing it, um, I can mention that the churning of the ocean pastime is something that uh, Radhika Raman Prabhu and I discussed as our first lesson of eight lessons, which we recorded uh, in our sessions at his university this last week. As I mentioned in the beginning, but for those of you who joined later, <clears throat> um, we were recording discussions, uh, lessons actually for our course, the for the Oxford Center for Hindu Studies. And as we do in our book, the Bhagavata 
sacred text and living tradition, we uh, we take the story of the churning of the ocean of milk as a kind of um, launching point to discuss, uh, to introduce various themes in the Bhagavatam because it's very conducive to that. Mm. Mm, Guru Maharaj, uh, Deteshe Prabhu, he was writing instead to everyone in the chat, he was writing to me, so I will read it, what oh, is okay. his question, yes. So the first part, you, you already got it probably, and then he mm. said, um, uh, uh, just a second, yes, now he needs to be re re read it by the fourth of the four kinds of political diplomacy, that is the treatment of Pralat given by his two teachers. I would like to know at any time, if you do not remember now, since it is political diplomacy, which which of the four kinds of strategies recommended in this? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I have to. I have to. <clears throat> Scratch my, my head to remember. Uh, okay, this is. Oh, so it's it's not from Bhagavatam. It's from uh, Bhag, uh, Brahma Samhita. Oh, okay, and it's Brahma Samhita five forty. The non-differentiated Brahman is indivisible. No, I'm sorry, that's a completely other question. That's from Abhut. Okay, so... <laughs> hmm. Is he referring to a specific verse in the Bhagavatam, to a specific purport? I would like to see that first before I try to <laughs> respond. He, he wrote it again, Shumat Bhagavatam, Kento 8, Chapter 5. What is the yeah, verse, Daitisha? Yeah, could we get a specific verse? <laughs> He's looking. <laughs> it's always good if we're, you know, asking a question, something from Prabhupada's books that we get, you know, the, the specific verse or the purport or whatever, then we can, then we can look and see everything, see what the context is, and so on. Otherwise, you know, we might just be guessing, and it just <laughs> goes off in some some irrelevant tangent. He's looking. Meanwhile, uh, we could look at uh, Avaduta Rai's point. The non-differentiated Brahman is indivisible, hence is also one without a second, and is the infinite and re residual entity. Uh, what here means residual entity? Oh. <laughs> this is kind of... <clears throat> Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur was uh, known for his very special English, and the word residual means something like left over, that which remains. But why or how he means that in this context, hmm, I'm not sure. The non-differentiated Brahman is indivisible, hence is also without one without a second, and is the infinite and residual entity. Yeah, then we'd have to also look at more of his purpose. We might have to look at the verse, and so on. So I don't think I'll take time to find that all now. Uh, Chananivas says, regarding the churning of the ocean, why it was poison? Uh, the first thing that came out, what's the significance of it? Oh, yes. Um, 
Yes, I've always been struck by that. My understanding is uh, this relates very much to common experience. You have some plan, you have some something you want to accomplish. You begin the process of making that plan happen. And uh, the initial result of your endeavor may not be what it is that you were hoping for. In fact, it might be just the opposite of what you were hoping for. It may be bringing trouble rather than rather than nectar. I think we all have have that experience. Uh, so that's kind of what's going on there. Also, when you're churning, when you're, ch I don't know, when you're churning milk, it, it makes froth, uh, it makes foam. But also later when you're making ghee, what is ghee? You're, you're um, sort of cooking out impurities and those are coming to the surface. And we could also see this in terms of our practice of devotional service, our practice of sadhana. Uh, I think we also all have this experience that uh, in the process of purification, all sorts of things, so to say, come to the surface, uh, all the dirt, <laughs> we become more conscious of, uh, uh, of the, the impurities. Because we are becoming purified, we're becoming aware of what purity would be like. And we, uh, we become more acutely aware of our own lack of purity. And then another analogy, again, from stirring, if there's a still pond of water and then you start stirring it, you're stirring up what was settled on the bottom. So like that, I think the, the idea is there. Of course, this is also uh, the Lord's pastime in which he's accomplishing many things at the same time. Uh, he, as, as Kurma, he is getting his back scratched. <laughs> you could say that's the, uh, you know. Why, why did he make all this arrangement uh, appearing as a tortoise with the mountain on his back and all that? Well, his back was itching, so he wanted to have his back scratched. Why not? Mm -hmm. uh, but he's doing so many other things. And one of the things he's doing is uh, arranging for Lord Shiva to be glorified by demonstrating how he cares for the living beings and wants to protect them. Uh, yeah. And... Dira Lalita has two questions and Radhali has a question. Um, but first, I think we go to... Oh, okay. Uh, there is a link for Srimad Bhagatan. He sent it the verse. So Guru Maharaj, you can click directly and you will go to the... Oh, verse. I see. Yes. Uh, okay. All right, here we are. So, and we could share this. Let's see. All right. Um, so, who's speaking here, first of all? Seven, five, six, seven, five, six, and that's different. Okay. Uh, so this is um, in Nursinga Lila before Nursinga Dev appears, and it's it's Hiranyakashipu speaking to uh, 
to his assistants, oh, please bring me a stick. This prelat is damaging our name and fame. Because of his bad intelligence, he has become like a cinder in the dynasty of the demons. Now he needs to be treated by the fourth of the four kinds of political diplomacy. Uh, yeah, so the fourth one, I don't remember the terms, but of course the fourth one is actual, uh, is dunda, I guess the word is dunda, to, to actually uh, apply punishment. Uh, four principles are used to suppress to suppress him. Legal orders, pacification, the offer of a post, or finally, weapons. Uh, when there are no other arguments, he is punished. In logic, this is called argumentum ad baculum. So I'm, I'm not clear on what the question is. <laughs> the question is, which are the four kinds of strategies recommended in this Srimad Bhagavatam? Well, they're listed here. Legal orders, pacification, the offer of a post, or finally weapons. So I, uh, it's not clear to me what, what, it's not clear to me what is not clear. <laughs> that sounds pretty clear to me. Um, yeah. I hope that's okay. I He's kind of nodding. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's go back to, seems we're doing questions and answers today. Um, dear Lalita, you have two questions. Yes, good morning. It's Fadi Krishna, Bhima Maharaj, my God's family. Um, I'm reading now your book, um, a couple of weeks ago, voyaging through the Bhagavatam. Uh -huh. And uh, I was thinking, you know, because we have written our reflections on the first canto of Shinabhaka and second canto, I was thinking probably the next one logically will be the third canto. So I'm <laughs> I'm now reading a third canto, uh, trying to be thorough by reading it. And I, I was thinking, you know, to also uh, use your book um, to another Canto, and it's really helping me to um, sort of the, uh, understand the most important things in the third canto. So my questions are much more simpler than that, Keisha Prabhus. So this this uh, canto is called the status quo. I was only guessing, speculating, why is this uh, um, third canto called status quo, the status quo? That's the first question. Um, the second question is, um, you're saying that uh, in the uh, uh, third canto, one of the key five key verses that describe the mercy of the Lord, and this verse described, and then you described uh, how merciful he was to Putana. Aho baki young stanakala kutum. Yeah. 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 Who wanted to kill him, but he actually saw only only her act of a mother, and she became his eternal nurse. So I wanted to ask you, key verses um, of uh, that describe the mercy of the Lord. Yeah, there was a break there, but I guess you're asking, what are the other four verses? Yes. Yes, that's what I was asking. Yeah. I was afraid you'd ask that. Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't have them uh, in mind. Maybe that's a, a research project for Abdu to write. That's the kind of thing he'll find, um, and maybe we can get it next time. To the first question. Uh, so this is uh, 
Prabhupada's translation of the word stanam uh, in the in chapter ten of Canto two. Um, Atasarga visargas cha stanam poshanam utaya manvantare shanukata. Um, uh, something, something ashraya. <laughs> it's giving a list of the 10 uh, topics of the Bhagavatam. And then there's a few verses that give uh, brief elaborations on that. And then there are sort of two opinions, two theories about uh, where do you find those 10 topics? And uh, one, one idea is that the first topic is emphasized in the first canto, the second in the second canto, the third in the third, going through like that. And then you end up with ashraya, the final of the 10, referring to the 10th canto. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the other theory, so to say, is that, no, you don't start with the first canto, you start with the third canto. So the first topic, sarga, is emphasized in canto three, and then you get up through canto 12. And this was... Um, as I understand, this was uh, Vallabhacharya's approach, his understanding. And so he associated, uh, oh yeah, Nirodha Muktir Ashraya, that's the last line. So he associated the 10th canto with Nirodha, mm -hmm. um, uh, which means something like winding up, withdrawal. And um, he has some explanation for that. Uh, but the Gaudias say, no, that doesn't really make much sense. But in any case, Shiva Goswami says, actually, all of the 10 topics are discussed in all of the cantos. Uh, some are more emphasized and some less emphasized. He doesn't specify uh, in, in the Tattva Sandarbha that he just says in general like that. But the main point he, uh, Jiva Goswami wants to make, and it's there indicated in the Bhagavatam, is that all of the first nine principles are, are supporting, are, are guiding us to the tenth principle, which is ashray, the shelter. Yeah, that's about all I can say about that. Wow, that's that's. I will have to listen to the recording again to uh, follow. <laughs> but uh, uh, thank you. I think that the status quo could be that, like, um, like quietness after the war of Kurukshetra was over. Oh, <laughs> <I think laughs> that was my speculation. I think here sana means more like maintenance because the first two, sarga means uh, first creation or primordial creation. Visarga means secondary creation. And then stanam has the sense of maintenance. Okay. Stanam, poshanam. Poshanam means nourishment. Um, yeah. You can look, if you look at, um, if you read 10th chapter of Canto 2, or reread, uh, there's some verses there and Prabhupada's explanations. This book. Is that okay? Yes, that's wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone. Okay. <laughs> and... Radharadya, are you there? Radharadya is there, our doctor, who is now in Tenerife, I believe. Just trying to.
And for we moved. Connection. Please accept my invitation. Can you hear me? I think we left. Yes. Now I can see you also. I think that was in the green. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, ah. um, can you hear me? Yes, but it's kind of in and out. You have to turn it might be better to turn off the camera, although we'd like to see you. No. All right. Um, let's turn on the camera. Okay. Nice to see you. Um, I, I was struck. Um, um, we have this uh, ecstatic description of the hellish uh, planets or punishments, which would be a great addition to the Bible, um, which are only kind of like set up uh, for uh, Maharaj Parikshit asking you know, how, how to avoid that. And then right. comes the really amazing story of Ajamil, where yeah. you think, you know, he just ended really calling his son and had some previous piety and uh, could go back to Godhead, which is like really such an endorsement for for the holy name. Narayan, I, I wonder. Narayan, Narayan. Nar yes. <laughs> well, also with a kind of intensity. Uh, maybe dying helps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that may be like in addition. But I was wondering is in the Bhagavatam or there in, the, in our scriptures we have similar effects of prasadam? Yay! Yay! Jai. <laughs> Sita Sundari's favorite Sorry. topic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not only hers. <laughs> we are up to 1.8 million plates of prasadam now. So um, it's somehow a really relevant question. Uh huh. So uh, I think it, there was a break. So I guess I missed your specific question. Um, is there in our scriptures a similar endorsement of the effect of prashadam? Oh, uh -huh. okay. Because I, I can't remember anything from the Bhagavatam, really. There, the, the focus on, on the holy name. Yeah, the, the, the emphasis on prasadam is, I think we find this especially in our specifically Godia literature, the Chaitanya Charitamrita and so on. And for me, I think uh, what immediately comes to my mind is uh, the story of uh, Shivananda Sena's dog. Mm. When yeah. they, you know the story, they go, they're traveling uh, from yeah. Navadip uh, to Puri and Shivananda Sena has his dog, and then the dog goes missing. Uh, and Shivananda Sena is very concerned. And finally, when they arrive in, in Puri and uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is there, there's the dog. And what's, what's happening? Well, Lord Chaitanya is feeding the dog uh, with coconut pulp. He, he's sort of to tossing pieces of coconut to the dog, and the, the dog is, of course, eating it. And at the same time, he's saying, chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> so it's a, you could say a combination of the two, as I recall. Uh, it's, he's receiving, you know, double or triple uh, grace from the Lord. Uh, he's receiving that prasad, and and then it's and then he's not seen anymore. The dog is no longer seen, and it's understood that he must have gone back to Godhead. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also the story, also regarding animals of uh, some birds in in. Um, in in the stories of uh, Ramanujacharya and his followers, there's a there's a a, mm, a tank, a, a pukur, what do they call it? 
at, at one of his temp one of the one of the temples, which temple is that? Sri Rangam. Um, and the story is, as I remember, Ramanujacharya was sitting by the side of this water place next to the temple with some of his disciples. And, um, well, I need correction here, but it, I think he was tossing some some grains, he, he, some kind of prasad he was tossing in the water and the fish were co coming up and eating that. And then they all witnessed as the fish <laughs> flew up into the sky and back home back to God. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, and, Adam really works very well on animals. Yes. Well, and the question from the disciples was, Guru Maharaj, how come, how come they're going straight back to Godhead, just taking this prasad? And we've had so much prasad. We've had so much of your mercy and from the deities. And we're still here. <laughs> what is that? And uh, Ramanuja Acharya says, because those uh, fish are offenseless. Mm. So that, you know, was a kind of sobering response from Ramanuja Acharya. Yeah, that's what I said. It really works well on animals. We, we pack in a lot of nuts now for the chipmunks here. We are very inspired. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> uh, are there similar stories of humans, actually? There probably are, but I don't know if any come to... They're not so well known, is it? Swamiji, may I remind you of one story? Please. The story of Narada Muni. He took the prasadam from the sages. Okay, yes. Yes. There you go. That's the clue. Mm. And I'm, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm a heretic here, but uh, as far as the story of Ramanuja Acharya, that the fish being offenseless... That I will indicate that it's better to take birth as a fish. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not sure. I maybe we have to check the source for that quote. Yeah. No, there's lots. <laughs> yeah, and there's there's so much hagiography. Hey, you don't know. You know what okay. actually. Um. Yes, and uh, but. It's the conclusion that maybe better to take birth as a fish only works if, <laughs> if if you're a fish in this pond and Ramanujacharya happens to be throwing you prasada. That's kind of a long shot. It's kind of a long shot, exactly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll stick around a little longer then. Any other, uh, any other uh, reflection? Reflections while while you're at it, Sarvatma G. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm just happy listening to to you uh, and your interaction with your very advanced audience. This is this is very unusual that the questions are uh, at such level and. Oh. <laughs> so so I'm I'm happy to be a participant. I just remember that there's a story of Narada Muni. He actually yeah. but Narada Muni, to be fair, he requested the sages. It wasn't this uh uh he ate what they left. He actually requested the sages to partake of their remnants and they gave him the blood. So it's kind of a company, the prasaram uh, becomes yeah. more potent by the blessings of the sages, I think. Yes. And we can imagine that also he was listening to them uh, as they were talking with each other and so on. Um, yeah. I, I, <laughs> this reminds me of something like the reverse of that story. Um, I remember 
back in the 70s in Schloss Reddershof in Germany. Uh, Sunday Feast was quite an event. We had always, there would always be around 15 uh, really very good preparations uh, for the feast. But I always remember there was one, one devotee, I don't remember his name, uh, but after the feast, he would go around and take remnants from the plates of the guests. Mm. Because for him, this is prasadam. <laughs> so we always, the rest of us, we were always all thinking, you know, ooh, you're taking from the, you know, that's... <laughs> Muchi. That's Muchi, yeah. But for him, that was prasadam. Um, I, don't, I don't know whatever happened to him. Uh, did I tell you... Uh, uh... A loose, I know the time is running out, but did I tell you my uh, the the story of the first time I had Prasad? Uh, maybe you did, but please remind us. Um, I was just to 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 say it quickly. I was living in the jungle and eating no solid. I had nothing solid to eat, only water from a local river and uh, some coconut water whenever a coconut fell. So after six months of that, uh, and I was thinking, this is not enough austerity. <laughs> Just I was thinking, this is, obviously, I'm not getting enlightenment out of this. So I, I have to step it up a little. Uh, I read or heard that Jesus and Muhammad and Buddha all fasted for 40 days completely. So I was thinking, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a 40-day fast. Nothing, not even water. Not just Whoa. air. There. <laughs> As I... As I was thinking this way, I uh, somehow or other I I went to town for the first time in six months. I, I had to get out of the jungle to a little fisherman's village and then take a bus to town. And then I met a devotee and the devotee preached to me and I just went to the temple and never left. Well, I left that temple for sure. Then... Uh, and she told me about prasadam, the power of prasadam, the incredible, even, even the external features of prasadam is variegated and delicious and unique and spiritual and so on. So I went to the temple on a Sunday and they sat me down and they gave me a plate with, you know, tali, about six different dishes and a little bread bun on the side and i i tried the bread and it was delicious i hadn't eaten anything in six months so anything would have tasted <laughs> delicious to me but it was great and then i tasted all the other six dishes and they were uh i would say abominable is an upgrade to what they tasted there was oh, it was oh horrifying inedible they were they were terrible they, they all looked like kind of like a oatmeal type thing, different colors, but they all, all, all <laughs> different the, colors of oatmeal. <laughs> yeah, different colors of oatmeal had a consistency of melted uh, earth. Yeah. Gosh. <laughs> so I tried it all. I, I I was polite, so I ate the whole thing, and I was I couldn't figure out the correlation between. Okay, she told me it was incredible, and, and uh, but this is horrible. And then it occurred to me, I had a moment, an enlightenment moment, where I thought, well, uh, if uh, um, austerity is a, is a key to spiritual uh, realization, so fasting for 40 days cannot compare to eating this garbage <laughs> for the rest of my life. So I imagine that all the Hare Krishnas are totally enlightened because they eat this stuff daily. So <laughs> there is no austerity greater than that. What I didn't know is that the cook was uh, sick and they sent wow. some, some guy who probably yeah. been to the kitchen before just to take the garbage out. They said, <laughs> you cook today. And that was 
that was my first experience of prasadam. But I was decided to stay. I thought this is a brilliant idea. This is this is much <laughs> greater austerity. <laughs> the power of prasadam. And ever since then, you've been making up for that first experience by yourself uh, cooking so expertly. As well, you do. This, is, this is strictly according to Prabhupada's uh, advice. He said, if you want to eat well, you have to become a cook. Yeah. And he also said, if you are a fat cook, that's a bad sign because it means Krishna is not the first enjoyer. Oh, I know, never heard that. That's. Uh, <laughs> I can't can show you where I got it from. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you for that. We are past our usual time, but Anissa, you wanted to say or ask something? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Yes, if it's okay. I just wanted to, I was really inspired by this talk of animals. Um, mm -hmm. And it reminded me of, we had just come back from Vrindavan recently. We were staying in Govardhan, and uh -huh. they were, well, we were told, um, Rukmini Prabhu was emphasizing how the animals in Vrindavan, um, and this was the first time I heard of this, the animals in Vrindavan um, are actually living their last life before they, you know, go back to, to Godhead for whatever reason, maybe they have some karma to burn off or, but that, that, that perspective was very very humbling to me because um i'm just reading a lot about the idea of like the hierarchy of moral worth that is pretty much pre prevalent in 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 our society just the idea that humans are at the top of the hierarchy right um and just like hearing that and then seeing as well how all the Rajavasis were interacting with the animals in 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 Dham was was very very humbling to me. Mm. Um, I just wanted to. It's probably an idealistic question, but do you think that do you think that that hierarchy could ever be inverted, or is that too much of an ideal in this in this world? Oh. <laughs> Uh, interesting question, and um, I think if it's okay with you, let's hold it for the next time, because uh, I think I'm, I I may have a couple of thoughts on that. Uh, but it's it's nice that you bring that up. Can you can you can you remind us next time, and we can discuss. Definitely, because we try to keep to our uh, our two hour period. Mm. So I will say thank you all for joining us, and, and uh, I'll be heading off tomorrow evening to New York, and then to London a couple of days later, and <clears throat> I should be able to have a session next Saturday when I believe I'm going to be in Oxford. So yes, we can meet again at that time. So I wish you all a great week. Um, chant and be happy, stay safe and stay sane. Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Ananta Kutta ki jai, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna,